हाय जितेंद्र हाय श्रीनिवास हाय दुर्गा हेलो हेलो एवरीवन ए हाय हेलो all right guys thank you very much for joining in uh, you know I, i welcome you all to the orientation session for the strategic business reporting exam all right so we will we'll kick start in terms of you know what we have on our plate today in terms of taking the the orientation through as to what we really would be covering in the strategic business reporting as we go forward the whole intention of this orientation session is to give you the perspective as to how the strategic business reporting exam looks like just to give you the feel up as to how the exam is going to be and what should be and what would be your uh, i would say action plan or your process in terms of you going through, going through the sessions and of course taking that through as you may go forward so we'll touch upon each and every aspect of strategic business reporting exam starting from what is included in the syllabus areas what is there from the standpoint of exam per se what is there as far as the examining approach is concerned because there is certain things that examiner really wants to target on and understand on so we'll touch on that and towards the end we'll also talk on you know what would we be covering in terms of you know the content and how one should be really approaching out from the process standpoint so we'll touch on that too to just have some ground rules being clear for all of us um just for another 45 50 minutes i really would want you to have your mobile phones on the switch off mode or on the silent mode if that is not possible because you know switch off uh, the silent mode is is required i do not want your concentration to be going hey why any which ways for what sort of reason all the cameras needs to be switched on as i said it is it has to be a video based face to face chat uh, you know audio chat doesn't help to me so it has to be a video chat per se make the best use of sessions and and you know that's what we are, we are intending to your time is really precious and i really value that so i really want to make the best out of it as much as possible q and a towards the end i would be taking you know the questions that you may have towards the end in terms of making um uh you know the, i would say the best out of it and of course answering all of the concerns that you may have as we go move as we may go forward from the content standpoint all right so what we will be covering over here some of the questions that you may have and we'll will just quickly jump on on the slide you know which because i think you know those are the like some some typical questions that everyone has and you may also have that in your mind so we'll we'll touch upon that we'll try finding answers to that in these uh, you know say let's say 45 to 60 minutes what we have and of course try to conceptualize in terms of you know how one should be approaching this exam in the best possible way we'll also spend some time on the understanding of the sbr exam structure and the content i think this is going to be the right pedigree or the right starting point for anyone to really start off this exam you really need to understand as to what the structure of the exam is and what the content would be from the standpoint of you really being there and of course approaching that in the best possible way we'll look in then move on to the approach of the examining team now if you really go on the acc website you will understand that each and every exam has some specifics which examiner will test you on and they really want you to be prepared on and that's what we really concentrate in our sessions and of course when we do our video question marathon when we solve our questions we give good amount of concentration in terms of you know how the examiner has been expecting things out of you and what you should be doing at that point in time so we'll be touching upon the approach of the examining team that is there on the acca website being available to you you can certainly go and check out there i've taken the extracts from there and of course i really want to discuss that we will deep dive into the sbr syllabus area of course as to what the syllabus areas content would be what you really need to target on and then we'll uh, jump on on to our study plan as to what would be our study plan and our approach to preparation and of course how one should be really rolling off and and moving forward and towards the end we'll stop by and of course uh deal in with the most important piece of the session which is the q and a i'll i'm i'm happy to take on any kind of doubts concerns or any kind of queries and even may have and happy to chat on on to them all right sounds like a plan guys just a show of hands and of course some heads up would help me understanding that yes you are pretty clear and everything is going going hunky dory so some kind of show of hands or somebody coming up over here and of course telling me that you know everything is fine would be really helpful Shrinivas, all good. 
All righty. Thank you for that. All right. Moving on, my friend, we have some of the questions that you may have. And this is very uh, peculiar things that I've been hearing on from various students across the globe. So I just wanted to pen down and have it over here in terms of you know concerns that you may have. First one, first is you know does SBR need any kind of a prior prior knowledge, you know? And there are many students who come from the exemptions route, as in you know you have you've got the exemptions of so many papers, and since you have not given those papers, many of the students have the doubt that you know how about me taking the SBR? Do I need a knowledge of FA, FA or financial accounting, financial reporting, the AAA or the AA? Do I really need any kind of understanding of that for the purpose of appearing onto this exam. I really want to target that over here, that the sessions that FinTram has, the way we have prepared our sessions, what you would go through as you may go forward, we have included all of the assumed knowledge into it. You do not, and I repeat, you do not have to go anywhere finding out any further content, anything and everything that is required from the standpoint of you knowing and kicking this exam in the best possible way is there in the content that would be provided to you. There is nothing that you need to refer from the FA, FR, or AA standpoint. Everything that is relevant from the examination standpoint has been taken up and, of course, given to you in the form of the subject material. So there is no as such requirement that you would have for any kind of knowledge that you may need to gain. You just have to go through the sessions, go through the content, and you're there from the standpoint of hitting this exam in the best possible way. All right, then what should be my study plan? We'll come on to that. I do have a slide specifically that will talk on the study plan. How much time I need for prepared preparation of this exam? I always say that you at least need two, two and a half months dedicatedly for you to be really prepared for one of the professional exams. And so is the case with SBR. SBR is no different. You at least need two and a half to three months if, if if you're really, really onto it and devoting good amount of time, two to two and a half months of time is, is, is a decent time to really prepare for this exam. Should you be preparing two exams in three months? Again, that is a question that has been coming up very often. Answer is no. In three months of time, two exams at the professional level is a straight no from my side. One should not be targeted. For that. Which material to follow? You know, we provide our own material. So you would have our own you know, material in front of you when you would sit and of course take our sessions. And that is the material to be followed. Nothing else to be to be really taken into consideration from the standpoint of any kind of syllabus exercises that you may need to attend on. So everything and anything that you need is, is given to you in the shape and format that is required. So I can tell you one thing, you know, what we have done and of course what the research team at the FinTran has done is that we have uh, taken the juice of all of the approved learning part, you know, providers material, what is there and what ACC really mandates you to really know on. And that juice has been provided to you in the form of the study material that you may have on your on your plate. Anything and everything that is required from the syllabus area content standpoint is being provided to you. And of course, it is there to you in the most reasonable and uh, understandable format. So it's not something that you would, uh, it, it is being defined and derived and, and given in a way that should take as less time as possible for anyone to really go through that. So it's not a huge um, I would say plethora of the data points that you may have over there, but anything that is required is certainly available to you. All right, moving on, do we need any kind of, uh, you know, other books to be referred? Answer is no. Uh, as I said, we do not recommend any other books to be referred. Anything that is required is being given. All right, so uh, do we need to refer any other book? As I said, there is no need to refer any other book. You may need uh, more practice of questions. For, ex for example, you may need, you know, some of the folks, they do not get uh, that comfort uh, in terms of, you know, uh, because they need to practice more and more questions. So for that, you, you can refer in, you know, various exam kits that are available in the market. But of course, we give our video exam kit any which ways with our sessions in the form of video question marathon. So that is anywhere there. But if you want to practice more, again, you know, you can certainly go back and, and start uh, you know, any kind of exam kit, uh, you know, from any of the learning providers that are there. If in doubt where to go, I'm the one, my friend, you know, and we know we'll be, you know, in continuous touch in terms of, you know, what you really need to uh, do from the doubt resolution standpoint, you would have my contact details available to you. And of course, you can reach out to us and we'll be, we'll be definitely taking that up and of course, resolving that. 
Is the mock exam important? If yes, when and where should I be giving the mock? You would be giving the mock with me. And that is super, super, super important thing. I can tell you one thing, your probability of clearing the exam goes substantially high if you have given the mock exam. And that's what we really target on with every student. You have to have to give mock with us. And of course, that mock get corrected by me. You would get the comments by me in terms of you know where you're going wrong and what all things you may need to work on. And of course, work through so that you're best prepared for you to give this exam in the best possible way. You have to give mock, you have to give mock, and you have to give mock. The reason I'm repeating is that this is something one should not miss on. This can certainly change the fortune of anyone in it. Is that clear, guys? I just want to take a breather over here. And now, Srinivas, Chitendra, anything that you want to ask, I'm happy to answer. Regarding the material you mentioned, like it will be a summary of something, the like notes, it will be proper material. Like it will be proper material, Jitendra. It will be proper material. Yeah. It'll, it'll, it is not the summary. It is just not summary. It is okay, so like, like because I, I will tell you about myself, I'm a uh, chartered accountant and CMA, and I have 20 years of experience, and I'm taking this course for my knowledge enhancement, and I might need to refer it again and again, probably after two years, six months, three years, I don't know. So I am looking for something uh, concrete, reliable, like, like, like dependable material for the future also. It's not like I pass. Uh, so no, uh, my question is uh, answered. Like you are saying that uh, the you will give us the proper material. It will not be just a summary. Uh, like uh, if the proper material can help me in the future also. So I'm happy with this answer. So the and only caveat I would give uh, Jitendra over here is that material that we will be providing you would is gonna be relevant for coming. You know, I would say three to four attempts. Now, there are changes that keep coming in SPR from the standpoint of IFRSS. Now, okay. you would not, so anything that you may want to refer two years later, you may not, uh, you know, that material may not make sense to you at that point in time because changes would have happened to that material. Because considering, you know, let's, let's say, you know, something in revenue changes. Now, you know, you can't help, I can't help, right? But I agree. as far as, you know, coming three to four attempts is concerned, anything that you would get, it will be bang on and would be relevant to you from the from the examination standpoint and any change even you know if, if it will come up so for example if there is a change that is coming up in say december just giving a heads up then you would be certainly getting that addendum that you know this is the change that has come up and these are the like you know changes okay. that you really need to incorporate i understand and i and i agree to your point second uh a doubt which i have how different is the uh, sbr course compared to diploma in ifrs like similar or which one is tougher um honestly that's uh, you know that that was not the agenda of of this meeting in terms of you know discussing two courses over here but now that since you know you have asked that let me just clarify that diploma in ifrs is a younger brother of sbr okay clear now you may want to say how younger it is that that can be a question that may come up in your mind uh, to in some areas it is much younger in some areas it is not that younger you know they're like of equal age but if i see it on the totality basis diploma in ifrs is a younger brother of strategic business reporting exam it certainly covers more holistic uh, ifrss but those IFRSs are not that prevalent from the standpoint of industry. You may find more IFRSs in DIPIFR than in SBR, but SBR has, you know, let's say XYZ is included in SBR, and those XYZs not in DIPIFR, DIPIFR may have ABC, but on totality, DIPIFR is a younger brother of SBR. Clear. Yeah. On your question on difficulty, Jitendra, in terms of, you know, what is difficult, both of them are difficult in their own aspects, in their own respect. It is very difficult to say that and, and uh, that this is more difficult. You know, every, you know, each of the exam has its own difficulty level. It all, it only depends on how much time you're devoting to it. Since you are a qualified chartered accountant and a CMA, for you, I think difficulty level of DIP IFR and SBR would be almost the same. 
but if somebody who is not coming up with a professional education background for them dep ifr would be easier because it will take less amount of time since it is only one paper to clear acca would be somewhat difficult because you have to give many exams in addition to the spr does that help jitendra no more question for myself all right guys anyone else have anything happy to chat on you are saying something shrinivas uh no nothing <laughs> all right right i think you you raised your hand so you know i, I don't know right so it's it was raised up previously <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so one thing uh, maybe you uh, clarify one thing maybe just ask me that right. so uh, actually i'm a professional uh, guy currently working uh, so i am in a cma qualified and uh, maybe i have ample of uh, two months maybe uh, for the june exam i am for already re uh, attempted for this spr so i just slightly missed at 47 in the at december i do it myself for own preparation and uh, but uh, is it i'm 12 ma two months of time example is enough uh, with, with, along with the working i mean i have this so I, have al i always say shrinivas that whatever time limit i always say is always with working for, you know is is always you know is always with your work it will yeah. it will never be without you know without any work now yeah. is the at professional level you would hardly find someone hardly who is not yeah. working somewhat in some way <laughs> or the other somebody is working right yeah, so yeah. it is always with the work and considering that you have already given this exam earlier shrinivas it certainly helps you to cover that yeah. you know in a in a earlier time and of course you know when you when you start going through my sessions you will understand in terms of you know uh, which session to really concentrate on because you know of course some of the sessions would be very generic and you know it so you can just you know move on and of course you know you can fast forward it but some yes. of the sessions like group accounting ethics and so on and so forth you again have to you know get on to the details and yes you know, yes definitely we'll talk more on that you know as we move yep. forward but sure. two months is as absolutely fine yep thank you okay one more question i have regarding the 60 lectures which are planned around 60 lectures how many of those lectures approximately are covered by you sorry i i can you repeat that there are around 60 lectures right uh i think there would be around 45 to 50 lectures not 60 out of 45 to 50 out of those how many lectures are covered by you you all. will take those lectures all, all. who else will Perfect. take it i am the one who will be taking it sir if you like it good if you don't like it no. then also i am here i'll be the one who will be doing it i am i i i have actually i have reviewed some something couple of more but i like your uh, style of explaining so it makes more inter interest to me if those lectures are all are covered by you no no sir all are like all of all of my lectures so in fintram all the lectures are covered by one faculty then we do not dodge amongst the faculty for one subject never happens thank all you. of the lectures would be with me including questions thank you thank you are wait wait it seems that most of you who are watching this video have not subscribed to our channel you would miss the new videos and the updates subscribe now and press the bell icon all right moving on guys let's go on to the exam structure in terms of you know what this exam is going to be all about you would have this exam to be of 3 hours and 15 minutes you would certainly get 3 hours 15 minutes for giving this exam you would have two sections in this exam you would have section a and section b section a is going to be having two questions and first question would be of 30 marks that is certainly going to relate to the consolidation there is always a consolidation question in you know as a question number 1 wherein you don't have to like more in most of the cases you don't have to like do the consolidation you may have to discuss suggest or recommend on things that have already happened or that is going to happen you may have to apply some of the nuances of the consolidation but it will not be a full fledged consolidation kind of a question that you would have seen when you would have given any kind of financial reporting exam it is not full fledged it is more of a an issue based discussion or a consolidation uh, concern based question that you would have over there and you will talk through in terms of you know whatever it is whether you have to discuss on some of the aspects you have to suggest on some of the issues 
you have to recommend if there is any you know issue that has gone wrong and so on and so forth and that's something that you would see in the section a as question number 1 section number 2 would be of the ethics um, and again this is something uh, i would say is uh, you know these are like low hanging uh, fruits for you or low hanging marks for you ethics question generally give you an easier marks wherein something that would have happened in the organization would not be right and you have to recommend what is the right way of of doing it basis the ifrs knowledge that you have basis the content that you have at the back of your mind you have to recommend what is the right course of action for that so you have to really talk on that so consolidation 30 marks ethics issue 20 marks is going to be the section a moving on to section b you would get two questions in section b which is of 25 marks each and of course these uh, questions would have variety of ifrs is being involved in it you may get to see some non current asset issue some depreciation issue some revenue issue some uh, uh, i would say employee benefit issues provision issue and so on so forth so you we would get variety of issues in these questions and then you have to uh, either prepare something or recommend something or discuss something in terms of you know what all has happened has that been right or not and so on and so forth the exam of the strategic business reporting is not going to be the mere accounting exam wherein you have to prepare something and give something like what we are used to as far as any accounting exam is concerned this exam is more of a suggestive recommendatory discussive nature of an exam is something that really makes this different from any kind of an accounting exam you really have to wear the hat of a controller or a cf over there and see through these issues and then sail through these issues recommending what is right what is not what one should be doing in these kind of scenarios doing some you know calculations also when required and so on and so forth there are two marks two professional marks that would be awarded you know uh, in the section a in terms of how you would write section a and then there will be two marks that would be awarded in section b in terms of how you would be writing that are like professional marks I am I'm not too sure if you guys have given your SBL by now, but those who have given your SBL in SBL, these professional marks were like twenty marks, like huge in terms of number. Over here, there are only four marks of professional. Uh, the way you would write, you would only be tested on you know the basis that you know only four marks would be tested on that, but rest of it is you know what you really write. All right. now this is something i really want to touch upon and you really have to have this at the back of your mind in terms of you know what the examiner really expects from you as far as the strategic business reporting exam is concerned many of the things i have already mentioned you have to be aware that you would be tested on your professional competencies in terms of dealing with the business reporting environment in terms of you getting on to that kind of situation understanding that industry knowing that industry and then recommending what should be the right course of action in that industry so you have to understand the business reporting environment that's the first thing the second thing is that you would be examined on the concept theories and principles and of course your ability to question and comment on the proposed accounting treatment now these are like current issues we'll talk on that when we'll just go in a while in terms of the issues that we really need to talk want to talk on but current issues is something that is always there in the strategic business reporting exam so you really have to go through what the current issues are there are some specific sessions that are there in the revision boot camp that we would provide you that will talk on various current issues that are happening in the industry so examiner really love loves to understand that how do you know industry is changing as far as these regulations are concerned and how do you know or how do you understand the proposed accounting treatment so you really need to know the current issues and then he would ask you that you know do you know not like do you know of this current issue but he would give you a scenario in which you need to apply that current issue that you know considering the the current issue change is happening this is what it should be and this is what it has to be so he really test you over there and you know the more you understand these current issues the more you will be able to understand these proposed accounting treatments and of course how to really handle that we have captured these current issues in detail in our sessions in terms of you know what all are there these you know keep change you know all these current issues keep changing so you know you would you know find some additions some deletions you know keep happening on the on the content but you would always find some of, some of the other current issues on to your syllabus areas that you really need to cover all right moving on we have an expectation that student should be capable of relating the professional issues 
to the practical situation again this goes to the ethics question that you would want to that you would see in the exam wherein you really need to understand what kind of professional issues you really get in and if that is the case then what should be your right course of action so you really have to be uh, appraised with that and in addition to that you really need to know the professional and the ethical judgment because the more you'll understand that you know this is an issue then what is the uh, right way of solving it and what is the right way of ethically uh, resolving it is something that you really need to know and you really need to recommend over there and that's what the ethical issue is all about as i said 20 mark question is purely on the ethical issues that you would face in the exam coming on to the stakeholder focus you really need to understand who you are dealing with in the exam as far as your stakeholders are concerned and you really have to demonstrate the right communication skills those who have given the aspel exam they would know understanding the audience is, has always been the key and of course more you will understand your audience the right your you know the, the very related your communication would be as far as you giving and recommending something in the exam and that's what is going to be essence over here we have covered that at length in our sessions in terms of you know what one should be thinking around it appropriate preparation and the presentation of financial statement is something i would say is given for any accounting exam and of course it is you know here also you have to really prepare and present your financial statement in the best possible way and if there is a mistake over there then you have to correct it and you recommend it and so on and so forth. so that's i would say that's the overall approach of this exam and shrinivas i can tell you uh, since you have given this exam many of the folks they never even go through this slide or this uh, content as far as the syllabus in the, in the acc syllabus area this is specifically given that this is what examiner is looking at and this is what one should be really targeting as far as when you are writing this exam so we will we'll, you know when you'll go through the lectures you'll understand in terms of you know how much stress we have put on on each and every aspect in terms of you know how one should be thinking about these aspects and answering that in the exam but you know just to let you know that all of these aspects are to be ensured in the exam to really make sure that examiner understands that you know it and you are able to deliver all right moving on to the sbr syllabus areas we have a to g syllabus areas in the strategic business reporting exam and of these syllabus areas the g syllabus areas which is employability and technology skills is nothing but handling the cbe exam so you would need to give this exam in the cbe environment so you know you employability and technology skills is nothing but handling the you know cbe environment in the exam in terms of you knowing what happens in the cbe are you knowing the excel you knowing the word you knowing the powerpoint and so on and so forth so that's the basic technology skills that is needed a to f is the content that you really need to read on starting from the fundamental ethical and the professional principle ethics questions comes from this area generally you, know, you would see issues being highlighted over here you have the financial reporting framework coming up next and then the reporting of the financial performance now reporting of the financial performance is nothing but i would say uh, variety of ifrs are being listed under this in terms of you know uh, what all uh, reporting you really need to do on all of those ifrs whether it is revenue whether it is non current asset whether it is financial instruments whether it is employee benefits income taxes uh, share based payments and so on and so forth everything is being covered in reporting of financial performance so reporting of financial performance is basically section b of your exam wherein the ifrs questions are being heavily tested over there so you would certainly see something there moving on we have the uh, financial statement of group of entities again which is like consolidation so that's again something that we really need to take on interpretation of financial statement is the section e of your exam the syllabus area e of your exam where you really need to interpret the financial statement from the standpoint of what impacts how and then how is to be understood in the context of the business in the context of your audience and so on so forth so that's something we will will be capturing in detail and then last but not the least is the impact of changes in the accounting regulation which is nothing but the current issues as i said that are really coming up your way so we have covered all of that in our session as far as you know the overall uh, curriculum is concerned sir i am asking that where can we get more questions to practice from because i was going uh, from the uh, like uh, from a few question papers and i went through the exam kit also 
so uh, there are only around 100 questions or 150 questions so for each topic the number of questions available uh, is a bit less so uh, is there any area or any resource point from where we can get questions Raghav, have you done the question marathon the video exam kit that has been provided to you have you done that no 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 i haven't go through that buddy that you know because first thing first is going through the revision boot camp of intram because that would give you each, the questions in each and every bucket. The section A, section B, the concept questions, comprehensive questions, everything is being given over there. So just go through that. Once you have gone through that, then you should refer any exam kit if you really have to. And what, you know, you should refer only one exam kit. There is no need to referring two exam kits. Any one, Kaplan or BPP, whatever you like, you can refer one. And then if there is a need that you feel that you really need to practice anything more, then go for the ACCA website and practice the past exam questions. Many of that has already been taken care of in the, in the video exam kit that we will provide you in the video question marathon. But you know, if there is anything that, 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 that you really need to take on, just go on to the ACCA website. There is no other need of going anywhere else. Actually, the problem that I am facing right now is I have just now cl uh, cleared my C examinations and I have a lot of workload on me. So because of that, I am not able to manage my time. I mean, I was giving around two hours early in the morning, but uh, the, uh, till March end, there was a lot of pressure. So right now I'll be again starting. So uh, do you think 10, 15 days would be enough to crack uh, two examinations? If I give 100% in the 10, 15 days? No, sir. I'm just Sorry. asking. No, sir. No, hmm. not at all. I, I will never recommend 15 days for two exams, sir. Okay. That's societal, Raghav. And I can tell you one thing, which, which I, um, you know, I'm a qualified chartered accountant myself. And I can tell you one thing, which most of the chartered accountant feels, and there is no offense to anyone, but many of us feel that since we have cracked chartered accountancy, you know, ACCA would be a cakewalk. I can tell you, and I interact with so many students, I can tell you this is generic, you know, generic feedback that I get from various students. But my friend, that's not going to be the case. It's not that easy. It's not tough for us, for sure, because we have already gone through, you know, Mehmet, I would say, content. We have already gone through that. But trust me, they have a very different way of asking questions in the exam. And one has to really go through that as a content to really know as to what they really expect and how should I answer that. And this is what the answer is. And that's where I can tell you many of the chartered accountants, they struggle in the exam. Many of them including me, let me tell you that. It's not, I'm not, I'm no different. So you and me are no different, right? The barring that I may have many gray hairs and you may not have, but you know, beyond a point, we have read the same content. The, the problem is that the way the ACC examiner really asks the question in the exam, and there are some classic exams, you know, when you sit on for SBL, you will relish the way they, they, you know, they give you a case and then you really need to go through the content and answer it. When you go through the SBR, you'll understand that they're giving you five different cases in one exam. And then you have to you know, go through that and answer that like a CFO there. What we are used to doing in, in chartered accountancy is more of, a, more of a preparation kind of a thing that we do. Commenting is something that is less over there. I'm not saying that is zero over there, but that is less over there. Commenting or a discussion or a suggestion is less over there. There, the, con the, the what you will generally do is you, you prepare the content in the best possible way. Over here, preparation in the, for example, in the SBR exam, preparation would be half done or 75% already done in the exam, as in from the financial statement standpoint. But the closure of it, the interpretation of it, the issues that you would see over there, the answer that you need to give, the report that you need to prepare is going to be something different. And that's where you need time. So, if you have less time, go for one exam. Do not go for two exam, Raghav. My suggestion would be there is no uh, reason to get demotivated when, when there is really no reason. Does that help, uh, Raghav? You know, I'll find more time. I'll definitely get more time out of it. I mean, if, I already if you can have more time. Then, have around 60 days. If you can have more time, then it is absolutely have around but if time is less than non two exams can't be done in 10 to 15 days. Uh, sir, I am having just one question. Sir, mm -hmm. on the scale of one to 10, how similar is this exam to SBL? 
where 10 is the max, 1 is the least? Yes, sir. All right. This is like 4. 4. Okay, sir. Okay, means. Or, maybe you, three. Sir. or maybe 3, uh, three 4. Not, not more than that. But is SBL part helpful and at the ethical question? No, it's a difficult, it's a different one. See, the only two or three that I'm giving is more that, you know, you know, the format, you know, the, you know, the, how it works and, you know, you are used to handle different case studies, different tabs. So you are used to that and you have that feeler, but questions over here are very different because, you know, it's more of an IFRS based kind of a thing. And it is not very generic as what you would see in SPL. Okay, sir. Thank you. All right, guys. So we'll quickly move on to our study plan. So what you would get and you would see in the sessions that would be provided to you, you would have the syllabus area sessions that would be available to you. And then you would be given the revision boot camp, which is Akka, the, the video question marathon or the video exam kit, as we may want to call it. In the syllabus area sessions, you would certainly find all the syllabus areas being covered in detail, and then you would have class questions also being attached to it. For, for example, when um, you would do a chapter on the revenue, you would go through the entire revenue content, and then you would practice questions on each and every concept in relation to revenue in the class. So there are various questions that are being solved in relation to each and every syllabus area in the class. So you, that is there in the class syllabus area sessions. So you would go through that as you go through any topic. So when you're doing the employee benefits, you would handle the questions of the employee benefits over there in addition to understanding the content and the context and the syllabus area. So you would you know, certainly answer various class questions over there. Once you're done with the syllabus area sessions and the class questions, I think there are like 26, 27 sessions of the syllabus areas wherein we cover the entire content as far as the syllabus areas is concerned. Once you have done that, then we'll move on to the revision bootcamp or the video question marathon, as you may want to call it. We'll touch upon the current issues that are there or that are relevant from your examination standpoint as to what is changing in the industry and how the regulators are changing the accounting pronouncements or regulations or so on and so forth. So we'll go through that in terms of the current issues. Then we'll touch upon various concept questions that we have created. Now, this is something that would give you or that will fill up the additional knowledge that you may need since if you're coming from any kind of uh, uh, if say let's say you're a qualified chartered accountant and you're you know you're jumping on and doing the uh, doing these sbr for the first time there are some uh, some concept knowledge or concept issues that examiner really wants you to understand these concept questions really takes care of that so they really would brush up all your you know concepts as far as the examination is concerned so you would go through the concept questions You'll move on to the section A questions. You would get ethics questions in the revision bootcamp, wherein we have gone through in detail various ethics questions that are there. And of course, we have touched upon various exam questions also here. Then we have touched upon the group questions. Again, the section A piece. We have handled how the examiner has been asking group questions and how one should be answering that there and then. And then last but not the least is the section B, wherein we have touched upon various IFRS questions that are there and if you get to see one how you should be handling that there and at that point in time so we have covered all of the sections and of course the current current issues along with the concept questions in the revision bootcamp to ensure that you get the full flavor of the content and this is what i was referring raga of that you know one you are once you are done with the syllabus areas the first step would be to practice the revision bootcamp and then if you find any need to go to any exam kit Straight away going to exam kit would take more, more time for you because you have not gone through the, the basic concepts and the ideas behind that. Once you've done that, then move on to the exam. Kit. All right. Once you're done that, my friend, you know, what is the approach to our preparation? Now, you know, this is something I really want you to guys to follow that. And this is something Raghav, that I was mentioning that first step first would be that you should start seeing the sessions and practice the class questions that are being given uh, each and every cha you know, chapter wise kind of question that you made that you have in the exam, you have to follow the sequence go from se se session one to session 26 27 whatever that number is, you should not uh, pass by any number, there is a sequence that is that is followed. Uh, in terms of what makes sense for you to understand the full content, so you should follow that sequence go from one to 26 27 and not juggle out the number, because there are some prior. Uh, understandings that are that would be needing 
if your straight away going on to session number 20 as in we would be they, you would be needing something to be to be understood till that point in time and that is very well taken care if you'll go through the sequence because the concepts have been built on one by one so that you know you 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 duly taken care from the standpoint of what you really need once you've done that then of course you should certainly watch the marathon at least twice i keep saying that like a broken record and uh, people who have been with me in sbl they know it you know that i i keep repeating that uh, as many times as possible that marathon has to be reviewed at least two times because more you'll understand those questions the more you get the feeler of that the best it is for you to really handle that in the exam and then you have to practice the marathon portion by your own hand and i I know I, I'm, I'm like a broken record on that. The more you'll practice question by your own hand, the more appropriate or, or, or prepared you are from the standpoint of handling that in the exam. Practice the last exam questions or last exam questions, whatever you want to call it. Do any exam kit if you may like, uh, but I think past exam questions are, are pretty good in terms of giving you the exact feeler. If you can really practice that, it is, it is very much, you know, you are very much there and then give a mock exam preferably too if, if you can give a mock exam get the review uh, you know get yourself corrected and just move on towards the end you know once you are clear you know, once you have cleared this exam Srinivas you know I'm sure in the June you'll clear this exam and when you'll clear the exam you know it's a coffee time and you have to treat me with a cup of coffee and uh, once that happens then we will go and give you the thanks that yes this really works for us and then we will take it on so that's what I really wanted to cover, my friend, in terms of the content. Again, you can reach out to us if you have any query. I have my email, you know, also being given over here. And of course, you know, you can reach out to us on the number that is being provided. And now I am open for any kind of questions that anyone may have before we really wrap up. Yeah. But for IFRS, which selection is to be made, UK or international? So we do international. Uh, uh, so anything that you're doing with me, we are doing international. Okay, fine. Sir, how many lectures should we cover in a day, according to you, with the revision? It depends now, Ditya, what all time you have. It really depends. I would always say that one lecture in a day is, is more than enough. Okay, sir. Uh, one question. Uh, I was going through the website and I saw that there is some professional exam also that needs to be given. So, uh, like, can you please elaborate on that? Because I didn't find uh, a lot of content on that, or I, I don't have. Actually, I don't have any idea about that. Which professional exam, Raga? Sir, what actually, he is talking about the ethical module. Uh, ethics and professionalism. Ethics and oh, okay. Yeah. EPSM module. Yes, you yes, need yeah. to give the EPSM module once you are. So, uh, in ACCA, you have to give thirteen exams, and then you have to give the EPC. You have to handle the EPSM module and give the exam for that. And that that what makes you qualify as an ACCA member. And it's it's more like a it, it's more like an ethics and professional uh, in like the professional ethics that you do, Raghav, in chartered accountancy, it is more like that. You would go through yeah. the ethics and uh, and it is more like a, you know a, a, an open textbook kind of a thing that you really have to go through. And then you know it's an online exam that you need to appear off. So it's it's just not difficult. You just have to spend a couple of hours, three, four hours over there, and then you're you're done with that. Because a few of my colleagues were saying that before prior giving the exams, the four exams, you should give the EPC, EPSM exam. So the chances of you passing the ACC exam uh, is a bit higher if you give this one prior to the other four. So, so is there any, uh, I mean, is there any credibility in the statement or? So I, I would say that, you know, every, uh, you know, if somebody is experiencing something, there would be some credibility to it. So I'll not, uh, I'll not just eliminate that as a statement. Uh, of course, giving this exam certainly helps you understanding the ethics and of course, uh, professional issues better. So if you can give it good enough, but all I can tell you, as I said, you know, any prior knowledge that is being required for you to give the SPR exam is certainly covered in our sessions because when we have prepared our ethics uh, module in terms of, you know, what you really need from the ethics and you know, our professional issue standpoint, we've already covered anything and everything that is needed there. Uh, so one thing, uh, actually, I mean, uh, if you're giving uh, attempt for two papers, so there is actually some 
good combination, right? Like SBL and SBR is a good combination. ABM and AFM is a good combination. So can it be like a, uh, uh, have to take the good combination or uh, any two papers is fine for preparation like that? If you have an ample of time, like uh, maybe three or four months, after giving an attempt to June, maybe in the December, can we take like SPL and uh, AFM like that? Any exam you have already cleared, clear Srinivas by now? Any any professional exam you already cleared? <laughs> no, no, no. I just attempted a SPR December. <laughs> And I didn't get it at all. So let me let, let me give you my two cents on that. You know what is the ideal uh, combination as far as the uh, the support is concerned. So SBR and AAA, SBR and AAA have many elements in uh, or many similarities uh, in the exam. So once you have given the SBR, the next exam that you should give is AAA. That's what I feel because. In AAA, there would, be, there would be many concepts on the IFRS that you really need to comment on. So it helps if you are thinking about that. Once you have given the SBL, then the next paper that you would certainly target is the APM because APM has many content or, or various areas uh, of SBL into, the, into, into their syllabus. AFM, you know, uh, is, is, has no similarity with SBR or SBL. AFM is a standalone species because you know if you're if you've given the FM, then AFM is any which way is uh, for example, in at skill level, if you would have given as you know FM to start with, then you know AFM would have been the right choice just after that. But in professional level, similarities only exist between SBR and AAA and then SBL and APM. A AFM and ATX are like you know on the standalone basis. Many of the students that give SBR and AAA together, let me tell you that. Many of them. I thought of taking optional AFM and APM, but uh, thanks sir, for this uh, wonderful. Actually, See, if yeah. you're giving SBR, Shrinivas, and you can Google it out also. It's not that I'm just saying it. You know, I, you can Google it yeah, out. I, 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 Any I, I, of the SBR students, because in, in AAA, there is a specific component of IFRS that is tested in the exam. Since you, since you would just give trip, uh, you know, SBR now, you already have that very much refreshed in your mind. So it takes less time for you to really consume and deliver. It, it becomes easier for you to really go through that and just appear it there and there. And on the similar basis, there are many various concepts in SBL that are very much there in APM. In fact, some of the concept, and I know the, you know, my APM faculty, some of the concepts we have interchanged that, you know, yes, it is the same. It is the, you know, it is the same content. So, you know, we can use that. All right. Good guys. Thank you very much for being here. And uh, of course, taking out time for me. Uh, you know, we certainly, uh, uh, I would say, uh, are heading towards uh, hitting our June exam in the best possible way. Just follow the process. There is a good amount of effort that has gone behind creating this as a content and giving you the strategy as to what one should be following for hitting this exam in the best possible way. And, you know, just follow that. There are uh, various uh, success stories that we have seen uh, by following this as a mechanism. And I'm sure, you know, yours would be the next. So just follow this. And uh, I'm sure, you know, with the, uh, you know, with the blessings of the Almighty, we should certainly see uh, a very different uh, results for ourselves too. So look forward, guys. All the best. We'll see you again. Uh, as we move forward in the syllabus areas, we'll see you again uh, in some of the sessions that, that we may you know, come upon and chat on uh, as we go forward. And if there is any concerns, you have my email ID, you know, just drop me an email, you know, email on that and I'll be happy to pick that up. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Very All much. right, guys. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.